the Ninja Foodi XL Pro 7-in-1 Grill Griddle. Hi sweeties, today we are talking about the new Ninja Foodi XL Pro Grill. Indoor grill, air fryer, griddle, it does a whole bunch of things. We're going to compare the new Ninja Foodi uh, Pro XL Grill to the original Ninja Foodi Grill. We'll compare it to the uh, Ninja Foodi XL Smart Grill. We're going to talk all about it, what it does, what it doesn't do. Let's get into it, but first, please subscribe to Sweet Savant. Hit that thumbs up, that notification bell. Now let's get into this new Ninja Foodi XL Pro Grill, Air Fryer, Griddle. Yeah. The original Ninja Foodi Grill and the second generation Ninja Foodi XL Grill both came with a cooking pan, a grill grate, and an air fry basket. The new Ninja Foodi XL Pro Grill comes with a griddle, a four quart air fry basket, grill plate. Has some heating directions on the side. We'll go over the dials in the front in a minute. Let's open the top. We've got the fan on the top, as we've seen with the previous models. But what makes this much different from the previous uh, Ninja Foodi grills is that this has a heating element on the bottom as well. The other heating, the other Ninja Foodi grills only had the top heating element and fan. This Ninja Foodi grill has a top heating element and a bottom heating element. We can snap this grill pan in place. There's a little red button on the side. You press to release it. So the grill pan is in place. And another big difference is that you can now use the grill with the lid open or the lid closed. Whereas before you could only use the Ninja Foodi grills, the old models with the lid closed because it only cooked from the top down. Now you can cook with the lid open, with the lid closed, and depending on the setting that you use, you can use it with either both heating elements on or the top, or just the top if you're doing air fry, or just the bottom. So the griddle is in the grill is in place. And then the, the griddle part will just sit right on top of that. So that's how the grill fits in, and you can see it's got a trench there for excess fat to drain off. The griddle pan fits right on top of that. And the air fry pan fits on top of that. Let's take a look at some of the functions. First, here's the power button. And this knob controls a whole bunch of different things. So if you press the function to be able to use this knob to change the different functions. Then, Let's say we want to roast something. If we want to change the temperature, we press temp, and then we turn the knob up or down. And if we want to change the time, we press time. The time starts blinking, and we can turn the knob up or down. Your start stop button. You can see there as it preheats or you can stop it. And then when you're done, it says goodbye. I'm gonna start my first demo by showing you how to use the air fry basket. I'm gonna make my delicious Vietnamese inspired chicken wings, air fried chicken wings in the Ninja Foodi Pro uh, 7-in-1 grill griddle. We're gonna start off by Turning it to the air fry function. We're gonna put the heat, we're gonna start with 425, and I'm just kind of winging it here. Get it, chicken wings, winging it. I'm just winging it here, playing around with it. This is my first time using the appliance, so we'll get it preheated. 
and get our chicken ready. Preheating is done. The Ninja Foodie Grill says add food. I will give you the uh, recipe, all the instructions for this chicken in the description box. So check the description box for the full directions. We will lay these uh, chicken wings in one layer. I did coat them with a little cornstarch mixture and we're gonna lay them in one layer for nice even cooking. I'm gonna spritz the chicken wings with a little oil. Check the description box for links to all the products I use, the oil sprayer. I'll put a link in the description box for that as well. Halfway through cooking, you'll hear a, a beep, a little alert, and you'll get a message that says flip. That means it's time to flip your food to get it evenly crisp on all sides. So we'll flip our chicken wings and then spritz them with some more oil and let them finish cooking. I have decided to crank the temperature up. So all you'd have to do is press temperature and turn the dial, it goes up to 450. That's the maximum temperature in air frying. And we'll give it a few more minutes so we can get a nice and crispy chicken wings. It's ready. Let's open this up and see what we got. Mm, those look delicious to me. Crispy and golden brown. So darn tasty. We're gonna drench this in a little sauce and it'll be ready to serve. I forgot to do a crunch test before I put it in the sauce, but the second batch I did, I cooked at 450 all the way through. Listen to this is the second batch, the crunch test on that. Superb, I also let it sit in the coating for a little bit longer before cooking. Let's take a look. See what's left inside the air, fr air fry basket and you can see how some oil has sort of collected in that bottom part of the air fry basket. I'll do a whole video showing you how I made this sauce and the marinade that I, I used for this chicken wings. It's, this is a great recipe. Like these Vietnamese inspired chicken wings come out so good. And after we remove the air fry basket, there's some crumbs down there. A little oil is collected. Just press the red button. The grill pan pops out and we just wash it up. And now let's move on to our next demonstration. Now that that grill pan has been cleaned because that has to stay in place no matter what we cook, the grill pan is in place, but we're gonna put the griddle pan on top of this. And if you look at the grill pan, it's a little bit slanted towards the front, and but when you put the griddle plate on top, it's level. We'll turn this on. We're going to do a fried rice, shrimp fried rice recipe. So we will uh, turn our function to barbecue griddle and we'll turn the temperature, actually 400 for barbecue griddle, it's as high as it goes, or you can turn it down. And for time, we're just going to kind of wing it. So we'll set the time and we'll adjust it if we need to. So we'll let this get nice and hot by pressing that start button and let it preheat. And while the griddle is preheating, we're gonna take our peeled and deveined shrimp. We'll drizzle it with a little bit of oil. This is just some vegetable oil, just about a teaspoon. You don't need much. Season it with a little garlic powder, a little bit of salt, white pepper, and some lemon pepper. Toss that all around. And when our grill is hot, it'll say, our griddle, excuse me, is hot, it'll say add food. We can open the lid and get these shrimp on in one nice even layer. Now these are some nice big plump shrimp. And after about two minutes on this side, we'll check it and it is getting nicely cooked. And let's, uh, let's flip these over. We're gonna speed things up a little bit. We'll flip them over, let them cook for another couple of minutes on the other side. And since they're large, we're even gonna turn them so that they cook in the middle. We'll turn them kind of on their backs and 
beautiful done in just a couple of minutes now it's time to pull these shrimp off and we're going to saute our vegetables some carrots some broccoli and some scallions make sure that you are using either a silicone covered um, kitchen tool like spatula or i'm using tongs or wooden spoon something like that don't use any metal because you can scratch the non-stick surfaces so be careful to use um, something like a silicone coated um, utensil or a wooden spoon we'll add in a little oil a little more oil to stir fry and uh, it does a very nice job it's a good surface area to stir fry these vegetables on and right now we're cooking with just the bottom heating element we're going to add a little bit of water into this to create some steam and then we'll put the top down and the top part when you put the top down then the top heating element kicks on cooking from both the top and the bottom and look at that our vegetables have softened with the steam they're getting nicely cooked and now we can carry on with the rest of our fried rice we'll get uh, we'll get an egg in there because look fried rice you gotta you gotta crack an egg in there so kind of move everything off to one side to give you a clear or mostly clear griddle surface we've got a nice large egg you can put two or three eggs if you want and you can beat the egg beforehand scramble it up and then put it in but I just skipped that step I put the egg right on the griddle and then just take a spatula or something like that and use that to mix our egg up I'm adding in some cooked white rice and anytime I'm cooking rice for dinner like on the weekend or something I make a double batch and keep some leftover rice in the refrigerator add a little bit of oil in there a little soy sauce maybe a little water help keep it moist I'm using less sodium soy sauce and just stir that around um, you can add a little salt pepper in there for your vegetables but I'm trying to watch that salt so I'll stick with the less sodium soy sauce um, you can also you know you can really have fun with this add some garlic add whatever vegetables that you like um, and now we just mix it up and the sides on this are, are pretty low so you have to be careful when you're mixing up your um, dish there because things can <laughs> can fall out but um, it, it works really well I'm happy with the way this worked out add our shrimp back in and dinner is ready all in one shot <laughs> in the ninja foodie uh, XL Pro 7-in-1 grill griddle and cleanup was really really easy nothing stuck and I just you know scraped everything out brought <laughs> take everything out and um, remove the grill let it cool before you wash it and that's it nice and cool now let's move on to cooking with this grill for this next demonstration we're going to be grilling some zucchini and this ribeye steak we put a little bit of neutral flavored oil that was just a little vegetable oil on both the steak and the vegetables we seasoned the steak and the vegetables with my seasoned salt blend I'll put a link to that in the description box we will set the function to grill we have it on high and we're actually we could put it it goes from max to low so we're gonna put it on max um, this is a pretty uh, thin steak it's less than an inch thick so we're not gonna cook it for very long I started with 15 minutes but that's even gonna be too long it um, I'll put the temperature the time down a little bit um, after we're done with the preheating uh, part of this so we let it preheat and then we will uh, get our food on now remember this cooks from the top as well as the bottom so when the lid is open it is still cooking from the bottom so we can continue to cook it like this with just the bottom heating element or when we close the lid it will continue to cook from the bottom but it will cook from the top down as well so that speeds the cooking process up a lot 
There's no real recipes here. I'm just winging it and seeing how things go. So we will um, turn that time down and all we have to do is press the time button and then turn the knob. We'll turn it down to, let's go with eight minutes and then press start. And we'll let that go. It has some recommendations for cooking temperatures and times. Um, it has a high temperature for steak of, uh, was that 16 to 27 minutes. That's much too long for this thin steak. And you see some steam escaping from the side, but it's not smoke, like I don't smell any real smoke. Um, it's just a little steam. Halfway through cooking, it says to flip. And that's what we'll do. We'll turn our steak and our vegetables over. And we've got some nice grill marks there on the zucchini. It's looking real good. One thing I did notice that with the grill plate, it is tilted slightly to the front to help fat drain off. And our food did slide down a little bit. Not a lot, nothing you know, too noticeable, but it did slide down a little bit. So just be aware of that. Got some nice grill marks on that steak. We'll close it down and let it finish. And that is it, y'all. It is done. We'll open a lid. There were a couple seconds left, but I'm impatient. <laughs> now, if I had the smart grill version of this, I could put a thermometer in there and it would tell me exactly when my steak has reached the pr uh, proper cooking temperature that I've set. Um, and that just costs a little bit more. I decided not to go with the smart grill version of this and just go with the uh, standard version. And it works out really well. But if you're a little um, more uh, concerned about cooking your steak, your food to the right temperature, um, then you might want to opt for the Smart uh, XL Pro Grill. Now it's time to wash. We let everything cool first because you don't want to handle these pieces when they are hot. That is not <laughs> what you want to do. So let it cool down. You'll see here where the oil pulled down at the front of the um, appliance. It's all cool now, so we will pop out this screen that covers the fan and heating element. And this is just after a couple of uses, so we're just gonna pop it in some hot soapy water. We press that red button to release the grill pan after it's completely cooled. And we will just pour off that excess oil that has collected and then we can wash these up in just some hot soapy water. Now you can see with the grill pan, just rinsing under a, uh, a strong spray of water rinses most of the stuff loose. So the nonstick coating is really works well on this. So there's not a whole bunch of scrubbing or anything that we have to do. If that fan cover becomes very greasy after a bunch of uses, you can put it in some boiling water, covered with boiling water for about 10 minutes, five or 10 minutes or so, and then wash as usual. And make sure that you wipe down the inside and the outside of the unit with just a damp cloth, maybe some soapy water, and then dry it out. Closed, the unit is about 11 inches high. Open, it's about 16 inches high, 15 inches wide, and about 17 inches deep. Well, that was a lot. Please let me know in the comments, what do you want me to cook on this next? I would love to hear your thoughts. What are we gonna grill? What are we gonna air fry? What are we gonna put on that griddle? Maybe some pancakes, who knows? Let's do it. Talk about it in the comments. Please subscribe to Sweet Savant. Hit that thumbs up, that notification bell, and y'all have a delicious day.